All right, so now that we know the order for the 2020 NHL entry draft, we know who picks three, two, we still don't know who number one is. We'll be taking a look at the draft lottery. Who of the top 16 teams here in the play-in series, depending on who wins the series and stuff like that, we're going to take a look at all 16 teams. Who needs Alexi Lafreniere the most? We'll be taking a look at that in this video. If you like what we're doing here at Goal Line Hockey and want to see the latest news around the NHL, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe down below. And let's take a look at the 16 play-in teams. Who needs Alexi Lafreniere the most? All right, so going from 16 to 1 of the teams that need him the least to the teams that need Lafreniere the most. So we're going to start up in Toronto at number 16. As the Toronto Maple Leafs do not need Alexi Lafreniere. You look at their top six. They are known for having one of the best center cores, one of the best forward groups in the NHL. And you add Alexi Lafreniere to that mix, there's no reason the Toronto Maple Leafs should not win a Stanley Cup next season if they were to get Alexi Lafreniere. Their first line would be Lafreniere, Austin Matthews, and possibly William Nylander. Now, I don't think Nylander will stay with the team if they get Lafreniere because they're basically getting the same player, but for an entry-level contract, which William Nylander is not, they could probably use Nylander as a piece to bring in a defenseman to help out their back end. So the Leafs could use Lafreniere as a way to move out a guy like Nylander to bring in a defenseman. Now, there's been rumors that the Leafs would trade Lafreniere for a defenseman, but... It's kind of counterintuitive. I guess they could do that, but I don't know why you would do that if you have an entry-level contract in Lafreniere. But just the thought of that first line, Matthews and Lafreniere on a first line, that is absolutely deadly. The Leafs have a good group already. They don't need to add Lafreniere to that mix. So now looking at number 15, we head, we stay in Canada, but we're heading to the West Coast as we look at the Vancouver Canucks. Now, they already have some very talented wingers on this team. You've got Petey and Horvat down the middle. And then on the wings, you've got JT Miller, Brock Besser, Jake Vertanen. All these guys down the they don't need help there on their forward group. And that's why Alexi Lafreniere, yes, he would look nice there with Petey and Besser on that top pair. Or JT Miller, but they don't really need Lafreniere. So now we move on to number 14. As we stay in Canada... Uh, we're in between Toronto and Vancouver, and Vancouver for this one now. At number 14, we have the Winnipeg Jets. They've already got Mark Scheifele, Blake Wheeler, Patrick Laine, Christian Veselainen. Um, you know, they've got a good group there. And, and the thing is, you know, the Winnipeg Jets, they need help on defense. So maybe they could use a guy like Kyle Connor or Patrick Laine to bring in a defenseman if they were able to pick up a guy like Lafreniere, kind of like the Maple Leafs could do. But in terms of needing a franchise winger, they don't necessarily need that. That's why they're at number 14 here. So now we move up to number 13 as we head to the States, down in Carolina, as the Carolina Hurricanes are at number 13. Now they've got already, they've got Sebastian Ajo, Andre Sveshnikov, Nino Niederreiter. They've got a solid group on the wings and in their forward group there in Carolina. And, you know, you add Lafreniere to that top line, you could have a line of Alexi Lafreniere, Sebastian Ajo, and Andre Sveshnikov. And that is a very, very solid first line. And that is a pretty sustainable line. They're all very young players. Ajo, I believe, is 20 or 21. Sveshnikov was the second overall pick two years ago. So, there's obviously a great deal of potential for this team with the Carolina Hurricanes if they pick up Lafreniere. They don't need him as much as the teams like Toronto or Winnipeg, uh, but, but he could fit in quite well there in Carolina. So now we move on up to number 12. And this team, as much as we talk about they don't need another first overall pick, there is reason to say they need some help in terms of their depth, and the salary cap has definitely come and bitten them in the butt over the past couple of years considering how good they've been and that is yes the Pittsburgh Penguins at number 12 here just the thought though of Jason Zucker Sidney Crosby and Alexi Lafreniere on that first line is it's scary because you look at that top six Lafreniere Crosby Zucker Sheary Gensel Malkin, you go down the list. That is a unbelievable top six in the NHL. There is no reason the Pittsburgh Penguins need him, but 
But like again, like Toronto or or the Winnipeg Jets, you know, it may maybe makes another guy available on, you know, a guy like Sheary or Gensel to maybe move out some salary cap in order to keep a guy like Lafreniere to maybe help out their blue line, which is a little bit more lacking uh, for that team. So there's obviously something that could be done there. Now we move up to number 11. Now the reason that this team, kind of like the Pittsburgh Penguins, they could use the help, especially on the depth, but the Pittsburgh Penguins were a little bit of a different story. They were in, you know, one of the better teams in the conference this year, in their division. The Chicago Blackhawks here, though, at number 11, were the worst team in the Central Division. One of the bottom teams in the NHL. They just snuck into this playoff format. Uh, but they've had a lot of success, and people don't want to see them win the draft lottery here. They picked up Kirby Doc last year. They've had some pretty solid pickups in the past. Patrick, uh, Patrick Kane. Jonathan Tays, you go down with the list. The, the Chicago Blackhawks have had a lot of success because of their draft history, and they've been a pretty solid team, and I don't think fans want to see them so quickly get a solid player here like Alexi Lafreniere, but you look at that first-line potential. Lafreniere, Jonathan Tays, and DeBrinckit, or Strom, or Kane, whoever they want in that top six, kind of like the Pittsburgh Penguins, a very solid top six, not to mention their recent success. And, uh, you know, not only with the Stanley Cup, but winning the draft lottery last year, moving up to number two, I think fans would be pretty disappointed and upset if the Chicago Blackhawks won this play. If they lost the playing round and got Lafreniere, fans would definitely be pretty disappointed. But there is reason to say they could use another top-end player like Lafreniere. So now we move up to number 10. And this one, same thing as the Chicago Blackhawks. They didn't, you know, they necessarily haven't had the huge success that Chicago did with the recent Stanley Cups over the past couple of years, but they were a pretty solid team for a couple of years. They've gone in a little bit of a retool here with Jeff Gordon and the New York Rangers. They do not need Alexi Lafreniere. I'll explain that because you look at this top line, you've already got Kako, Panarin, and Zibanejad. And now you add Lafreniere to that mix. That means one of Capo or Panarin or Lafreniere is not on your first line, and that is just not fair. There's no reason that should be happening. So I don't see the Rangers winning the draft lottery. There's no way the hockey gods give him to the Rangers. I'm going to look back in a couple months, and if the Rangers win the lottery, this video will come up, and you could react and laugh all you want. But there is no reason that the Rangers should win this. Uh, they don't need him. They've got a very solid group there. Philip Hedl, Vitaly Kraftsov. You go down the list. The Rangers have plenty of young forwards to play. They don't need Alexi Lafreniere here with the first overall pick. So now we move up to number nine. And this team's a little bit different than some of the teams we've been talking about. We're talking more about teams that could really use that depth. But because of recent history in terms of the draft, the Edmonton Oilers do not need Alexi Lafreniere. Now they need Alexi Lafreniere in terms of they need elite wingers. They've got a guy like Kaylor Yamamoto. They have Jesse Poyarvi. I don't think he's going to be playing with the New York, with the Edmonton Oilers anytime soon, but Jesse Puyarvi as well. So they could use Alexi Lafreniere. I think he would be a good addition to the Edmonton Oilers, especially playing with Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl. Oof, that's a pretty solid group. And you just look at that top line potential, McDavid down the middle and Yamamoto and Lafreniere on the wings. There's no reason the Edmonton Oilers shouldn't be at least, at least a Stanley Cup contender every season with that group. So now you've got number eight as we stay in Alberta, not in Edmonton, but we're heading to Calgary here. It's the Calgary Flames, a top line of Lafreniere, Monaghan, and Elias Lindholm. And that means Johnny Goudreau gets dropped down. So again, this is kind of like the New York Rangers. There's no reason that one of those players should not be on the top line, either Goudreau or Lindholm, because Lindholm had an unbelievable season last year. Goudreau slipped up a little bit last season, but he's still, we know how good Goudreau is. He's a very solid player. And then you add Alexi Lafreniere. It's just unfair. There's no reason that the Calgary Flames should win him. They don't necessarily need him that much. But, you know, like this past season, they just slipped up a little bit. They won their division last year. They slipped up this year. So maybe they could use that help uh, up front. So now we move up to number seven as we are looking at the Florida Panthers. Now the Florida Panthers may be a little bit more desperate than I think people are giving them credit for, including myself here, even putting putting them at number seven. Uh, you've got you know the potential of a first line of Alexi Lafreniere, 
Alexander Barkov and Evgeny Dadanov or Jonathan Huberto or Owen Tippett, that would be a very solid top line for the Florida Panthers. And they spent a lot of money bringing in a guy like Brett Connolly, uh, you know, guys like Sean Corrali. They made big, uh, Nola Chari, my mistake there, but they made big moves trying to bring guys in. It doesn't always necessarily work out like we saw with the Panthers this past season. They're probably going to look to move out some salary cap. And the skill of Alexia Lafreniere on an entry-level contract could definitely help the Florida Panthers out. So now we move up to number six at the Nashville Predators. Now, the Nashville Predators, you may be thinking, why are they so high up? Well, you look at, you know, their winger depth. And yes, they have guys like Victor Arvidsson, Philip Forsberg. Yes, they are, they are very solid players. But now that we've seen Ely Tolvanen kind of slipping up, Philip Tomasino still has the potential to be that really solid winger, but he's not the elite potential that they could have in Alexia Lafreniere. And the, I think the Natural Predators, especially up front, are lacking that star stud potential up front in the scoring department. And Alexia Lafreniere could add that for the Predators. And I think that's really the piece they need, that last piece they need to become a true Stanley Cup favorite. And I think that's the difference for the Natural Predators. If they were able to add a guy like Lafreniere, they, like the Florida Panthers, maybe could be higher up on this list just because of how much they need a player like that. You can't really find them in many places. You either draft a guy like Lafreniere or you find him in free agency just at the drop of the hat, and he happens to pick your team. So the Nashville Predators realize that's a tough player to acquire, uh, but they could possibly be getting that here uh, if they lose their play in round series. So now we look at number five at the New York Islanders. Now, the Islanders, I could make an argument that they should even be higher up than this, but there are teams that are more desperate than the New York Islanders. But here at number five, the New York Islanders, just the thought of a guy like Alexi Lafreniere. I mean, you look at what type of line you're looking at. You're looking at Lafreniere, Matt Barzell, and possibly Jordan Everly or Anders Lee, maybe a guy like Wallstrom or, you know, kind of any one of those players in that mix. That could be the first line for the New York Islanders. And, you know, you look at the Islanders, what they tried to do over the last two years. They've tried to bring in Mark Stone at the 2019 trade deadline. They tried to bring in Artemi Panarin last summer in free agency, July 1st. So the Islanders have tried to find that elite player, and they haven't been able to get things to work in their favor. Alexi Lafreniere would indeed be that piece for the Islanders. That's the player that they're looking for, and kind of like the Nashville Predators, they're looking for that just true stud elite player you know, and, and Alexi Lafreniere could be that for the New York Islanders. So now we move up to into the top four. So we're taking a look, staying in the Metropolitan Division at number four is the Columbus Blue Jackets. Now the Blue Jackets are interesting because they have lost a decent amount of players. They lost Matt Duchesne in free agency. They lost Artemi Panarin, Sergei Bobrovsky. They've lost their fair share of players last season, trying to go all in in the 2019 Stanley Cup playoffs. Now they did sweep the 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 Stanley Cup favorite Tampa Bay Lightning, the President's Trophy winners, but unfortunately, they couldn't get past the Boston Bruins in the second round. But the Columbus Blue Jackets, this would be a little bit of karma. You know, this would be the league kind of giving them a pass. You know, hey, you know what? You went all in. You kept the fans involved. You made a, a bold move at the trade deadline going all in. So this would be kind of a returning the favor. Losing Artemi Panarin, it equals out if they pick up a guy like Lafreniere. He's younger than Panarin. This could be a great opportunity here for the Columbus Blue Jackets. And you look at the potential top line that they could have, Lafreniere, Dubois, and Alexander Wenberg. That is a pretty solid top line there for the Columbus Blue Jackets. So now we move up into the top three. And a lot of you Arizona fans have been out there. I've been making videos about Lafreniere and stuff. And you've been saying, we need Alexi Lafreniere. And I totally agree. That's why they are in the top three here. Because the thought of a first line of Lafreniere, Christian Dvorak, and Clayton Keller, or Nick Schmaltz. That is a very solid line there for the Arizona Coyotes. And they're like some of these other teams, like the New York Islanders, the Nashville Predators, Columbus Blue Jackets, where they're looking for that stud, top-tier, almost franchise-level forward. And they could get that here for the Arizona Coyotes. And maybe they may be more desperate than a lot of these teams, based off of the fact that there's been talk about the team moving and not being a profitable team there in Arizona. This would definitely be able to bring more fans into Arizona, bringing in you know the marketing power of a guy like a first overall pick, Alexi Lafreniere. Yeah, that could be huge for the Arizona Coyotes. So now at number two, 
We've got a team in the Central Division that's been kind of squandering. They've made the playoffs, but they've gotten bounced in the first round. They've had their struggles against the Chicago Blackhawks or the Los Angeles Kings or whatever team, the National Predators. They've had their struggles there in the Central Division. They've started to tank a little bit. It looked like they were going to tank this year. They traded Jason Zucker before the trade deadline. But Bill Guerin could have a possible superstar on fall into his lap if things fall the right way. The Minnesota Wild here at number two. Alexi Lafreniere, Eric Stahl, Kevin Fiala at that top line. That would be huge for the Minnesota Wild. Fiala had a coming out party this season with the Minnesota Wild. And, you know, there was a lot of talk about a bad trade there by Paul Fenton trading out Granlin for Fiala and how bad of a trade that was. He may have known something here about Kevin Fiala because he had an unbelievable season with the Minnesota Wild. And if you add a guy like Alexi Lafreniere to that mix for the Minnesota Wild, oof, that is huge. And that could put them back into playoff contention as soon as next season because you've got a pretty solid blue line there in Minnesota still. You need a little bit more depth up front. Alexi Lafreniere can absolutely change that for the Minnesota Wild. So now we look at number one. And uh, based off of the jersey I'm wearing, you could you could pretty easily tell that they were going to be the number one team on this list, the Montreal Canadiens. I mean, it just it works way too perfectly. Lafreniere, he's from he, you know he played in the QMJHL with the Rimouski Oceanic. He's from Quebec. He's got the name Lafreniere. The Montreal Canadiens need a superstar winger. They need that super power player on their team. And Mark Bergevin is kind of. You know, sliding down his seat there in Montreal. The seat's getting warm. He may be a little bit on the hot seat. Alexi Lafreniere in Montreal, it's too perfect. And everybody is going to freak out if Montreal loses their round against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Let's well, let's argue, you know, even though some people have them have them winning that series, let's be honest, Montreal more than likely is going to be in this lottery system for Lafreniere, if Montreal wins this, people will freak out. But it is too perfect of a fit. And just the fact that Jonathan Drouet has not really worked out. He was supposed to be that guy for the Montreal Canadiens. This would be them getting that top tier player fall right into their lap. This is exactly what the Montreal Canadiens need. And you look at the potential of a Jonathan Drouet, Philip Deneau, and Alexi Lafreniere top line. Maybe Max Domi on the, down the middle as well. That's just a really solid line for the Montreal Canadiens and is a huge turning point for them moving forward. This is that piece that they need. They've got a pretty solid defense. They have Carey Price in between the pipes. They need more help scoring up front. And Alexi Lafreniere can absolutely add that for the Montreal Canadiens. So that's it for this video. Leave in the comment section down below, who do you think needs Alexi Lafreniere the most? And if you like what we're doing here at Goal Line Hockey and want to see the latest news around the NHL, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe down below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.